We've all heard the story of the scorpion who was who needed help to cross the river, and he asked a a, um, a frog for help, and the frog said, "Dude, if I let you cross the road with me, you're gonna sting me. I ain't doing that. We're both gonna die." And the scorpion was like, "Come on, dog. I'm not gonna sting you. We're, we'll both die. Just help me cross the road, and I promise you not to sting you." And the bullfrog crossed the river, and halfway through, the scorpion bit him, and they both died. What's the lesson of the story? It's a freaking scorpion. A scorpion is gonna scorpion, all right? My thing with this is that AD called him a walking red flag, and and it took her. This long to realize that? No, she knew this. Sometimes we know the person's nature and we just ignore it. And unfortunately for women like AD, she's one of those bobbed builders. She's one of those rescuer. She thinks she has maybe the magical poom poom to change him. But no, there is no such thing as magic poom poom that could change a man from being a walking red flag to being the second coming of the Messiah. That's just impossible. So we're going to be reacting to this video where he talks about his red flags without even knowing it. That's the thing about people with red flags. They expose themselves and they don't even know it. They expose themselves. It's like somebody who has bodies hidden in his apartment, right? Maybe here and They've gotten so used to the stench that they don't even notice that their room smells like decaying flesh. But once you enter the room, everybody could tell it smells like death except you. That's the same thing with people, right? Sometimes people who are toxic are so used to their toxicity that they don't even notice that they're, to that they're giving out those red flags. And sometimes when you like someone so much, when you are digmatized <laughs> by holy dizzy, right? That you that that like so, like 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 some magical like a like a magic like magic all of a sudden the red flags turn white and you get and you get colorblind to to the color red right so we're gonna be talking about one of those red flags that he has showed that that you you guys have to look for in other in, in in the guys that you date okay so let's begin this and if you guys enjoy these types of breakdowns. Let me know in the comments down below by commenting who else should I break down in this in this series and I'll make them for you, okay? Because I, Father Alex, is here to serve people, okay? So let's begin with the video. I went into this experiment wanting to be married, you know, like, although I didn't believe I would find marriage, the desire... Okay, that's the first thing. How do you want to get married, go into something without believing that it's going to happen? One of the signs that somebody's actually looking for love is that they they're hopelessly in love. They 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 have they're they're hopelessly romantic. In other words, despite the odds, they're optimistic. This is a red flag. That I mean, just in general, not even not even with relationships, but just if I heard that, I would have said, okay, dude, maybe this is not this maybe this is not for you. Okay to be married is there there is so much to talk about i just need to know for you how has it been watching this all play out it's like i'm a fly on a wall for my own life and i would say that i'm looking at it in a sense of it's like watching tape as an athlete i'm i'm, I'm oh, dinner right. i could do to get better and I'm all right so so he's saying you see, see the problem with people like him is that they recognize their mistakes but they don't recognize their mistakes to fix it they recognize their mistakes to, to, to as an excuse as to why they behave the way they behave. It's like the scorpion. My fault. I stung you because I'm in because I'm a, I'm a scorpion. That's pretty much what he is doing, right? And another thing about him is that he. What's funny is that he doesn't see his red flags as red flags. There's a lack of self awareness. He he. The things that he considers red flags really isn't what's really the problem. Watch this. Watch. Taking it from a humble perspective of things I could do differently. And I think that's the right way to look at it. I'm sure there are a couple of things that you wish you did differently. The one thing I'm taking away from this show, because I came off as authentically myself, that there needs to be a little bit toned down from the delivery. The delivery needs to be- He's talking about this like, 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 like he's, it's true. Like he's almost like he's watching game tape, you know. <laughs> like coach, be a little bit polished, a little bit better. I don't know if you saw this. He see, he doesn't see the problem. 
he thinks that he just came across as too unpolished. No. The red flag that you did, it wasn't how you that you you came across as too real. No. It was the fact that you just lacked integrity. You weren't honest from the beginning. Everyone else had one thing that they wanted and you had other intentions and and you weren't honest about it. And that's one thing about red flags. Is that a big red flag is when people lie to you about what they really want. This is why it's so important for you to first don't put pressure. If you really want marriage, for example, don't tell them you want marriage because you could run the risk of them telling you that just to tell you that. You know, it's much better to to conceal what you're looking for in the first two or three dates. Conceal it. Tell them you don't know what you want. Tell them you're open to anything. That will allow them to tell you what they really want. But when you tell them exactly what you really want, then it's, it's, it's some liars will then say, okay, if I tell the truth, she might not, she might not see me. So it's better to say less than necessary, conceal your intentions, right? And reveal your intentions, reveal your intentions later on. But, and the reason you're doing that is to gauge what they, what he really wants, but AD called you a walking red flag. Yeah. Is that looking? I know you're doing a lot of self reflection. Man, stop, white girl, stop it with the self reflection bullshit. I hate this shit, man. The, 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 this compassionate ass Karen. Stop it with the bullshit. Okay. It's too many people use mental health self reflection as just an excuse for their behavior, never really as a catalyst for change. And here, here she goes being all compassionate do you think you were a walking red flag i don't think so i do think that in life so life you do have family trauma that comes about um and i do think that i'm a work in progress and i and i do believe that everybody's a work in progress I so everybody has red flags motherfucker that's not what we're talking about you pretty much came in and just wanted to let people know i'm not perfect but I have a lot of things going for myself. So even with the red flag conversation, it's like, let's kind of tone that down a lot because a lot of men would love to be in my position. I so he's like, look, man, they're calling me a red flag, but let's 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 tone that down a little bit because a lot of guys would want to be me. You know, a lot of guys, and what he's also saying is a lot of women would want to be with me. Yo, y'all calling me a red flag, but all these women out here, they want to be with me. So I don't know what you're talking about. That's not a red flag. It's pretty much, that's just not being accountable. You know, it's okay. You know, it's funny. It's okay to admit that you you have red flags. I have red flags, people. I do. Like, what the fuck? What? Tell us what are they? I'm taking notes. No, I'm not telling you what they are, Melissa. I'm gonna start. You're gonna use that to cancel me one day. You know, and 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 and, 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 and another thing that he did was love bomb her, right? Because he told he told. He said to people he didn't know if he wanted marriage. He didn't know and at the end of the at the end of it, which you know everyone knows, he said no to her at the altar, right? Now this is this is what I have a problem. When I first saw when I first saw the few episodes, this dude was love bombing her. Look, look, look at this. I even read a comment that was really interesting. Let me show you this, right? I'm a black man, a brother, and I would say that guys like this is why our women are over masculine. When he said after the reveal that there's no way he could know if he wanted to spend the rest of his life with her after only two weeks of knowing her. I actually agree with him, right? Somehow, now mind you, you got to understand about something about love. When somebody loves you, it's not rational. So there's no such thing as it's only been two weeks, I can't be with you. No, when somebody likes you, they're like, they're like crackheads. There is, no, there is no excuse to not be with you when somebody likes you. If somebody likes you, there's no such thing as I don't have time to text you. There's no such thing as I don't have I don't have enough money for you. Have you ever met a crackhead? One thing about crackheads is that they always have money for crack. They may not have money to go out, but they have money for crack. So it's the same thing with this. When somebody likes you, they will create the time like magic. Things will just happen to make to make the relationship work. But come on, man, you you slept with her, told her you loved her. This is the part that that's a love bomb. And then this is the part that I think he 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 used because so there's something about manipulative people is that they can sense what you lack. They can sense what you lack, 
And something about women who are too open about their emotions is that you tell people what you you tell people what you want to hear. No, you you tell people you you show people what you want to hear from them. And so they'll tell you what you want to hear to manipulate you. Reading scriptures to her, Jesus Christ, even Christ is in this. Let her choose a dress, people. This is really dark. This is creating a fantasy. Let her com convene her mother, sister, and young niece. Walk down the aisle and let her say, I do, and didn't even want her. That's embarrassing. That's a love bomb and then a kick in the ass. That was traumatic on all three generations of those women. And I noticed they didn't even have one man on AD's side of the family to represent. A bunch of unprotected women. One man is all that could have taken to see right through that dude. That's very true. He spent the whole series crying on his shoulder and looking for her for strength and validation. This is just sad. So that's another thing. Not only did he love bomb her, but also he, he, he projected his own insecurities onto her. He used her as a vessel of self-esteem. He just used her for the fame and used her to cry so you have a shoulder and what's funny is that most likely he also knew that she was she loved rescuing she's like a fucking she's like M melissa the white girl who rescues dog for the sake of it right she she loves rescuing men and so he recognized her and gave her what he wanted he gave her a working a working case so that she could build him up so he love bombed her used her for fame red flag or used her for clout right and 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 using isn't just like using for fame when i say using i mean he um, he led her on so that means when they lead you on just for sex when they lead you on just for the connections that you have and look something about humans we all have to understand we all have to understand is that don't get offended when people use you the world that we live in is a world where we all use each other that that's how what that's what networking is. If you recognize that somebody's trying to use you, don't get mad at it. Just react. Just react with your own strategy. Pull away, but just don't get offended when somebody's trying to use you. It's human nature because you also do the same thing. Don't see it as a bad thing. Just see it as part of human nature. And he used her for fame. He, where some guys will use you for the poom poom, for the magical poom poom. Some guys will use you for your connections, for your inheritance. In case you're rich, right? And getting offended will not solve the problem. Understanding that this is just a fact of life will allow you to, to deal with those situations with a more clear mind. All right, let's just keep listening to this. Oh, still making excuses like your daddy. <laughs> Seek therapy and humble yourself. Why is he always talking about success and money? Nobody gives a fuck. What about your integrity? Exactly. There you go. You came on TV. You came on to be on TV, period. So he was on the show for TV exposure. Yeah, she wasted her time. Yeah, exactly. But this is the thing. Is that AD kind of sensed this. She, humans, you know, humans have in instincts. You know, she kind of sensed that he was using her. But she was hoping that she's wrong. That's what usually happens. And the things that I've, I've done. You know, the right. things I've been able to accomplish, I'm really happy about that. And I'm very well grounded. I have so much support and I'm really happy with the support system that I was able to grow over these years. You can't be a red flag and have, you know, just so many blessings come to your life. No, you could. You could be a red flag and have friends and family because you have different personalities. You know, you have different selves. You have yourself as a friend and you have yourself as a as a as a as a son and that could be the best versions of yourself but then when you are a boyfriend maybe that could be your dark side and maybe that side is is, is a side that only your partners can see maybe that side is moody masochistic sadistic dark you know psychopathic that that, that could be your one dark side so yeah, you could point to the other good parts of yourselves, but we all have that part that our, only our partners or even only our children can see. We, compart we compartmentalize, and this guy is not acknowledging that, and that's problematic. I would say the biggest issue is that in relationships, I need work on, you know? Like
the biggest issues is that in relationships i need work on specifically what my dude it's so abstract these are just words i need work what are you doing what have you worked on what has worked stop talking about pro people talk like they're they talk like like scammers where they promise things but they're not really specific about how they're gonna attain it they're just saying words because that's what you that's human nature's primary weaknesses words like i came from a little bit of a uh you know everything is working well in my life and i didn't really focus on the relationship aspect no the relationship aspect is a part of you despite whether or not you work on it you may not work on your relationship but if you're if you're really a good person on the inside you're not going to be doing this type of stuff. This guy is making excuses. This guy is saying the reason why, you know, this one part of my life is not good is because I just haven't worked on it. But look, I worked on the other parts and they're great. So let's just ignore that red flag. Let's not let's not focus on that too much. So I do the show to build an emotional connection. Then I realize, OK, no, he you went in it doubting whether or not that was going to be there. So you you weren't even most 100 percent. This guy's lying to us right now. This guy's lying to us. I'm doing all this work in my life and in my job and my entrepreneurship, my business. I need to put the work in in my relationship. So I think mm. that was a little bit. Uh... Let me tell you something. I never, ever put work in my relationship. I had a lot of red flags and even to this day, I could be selfish. That's a fact, right? I could be selfish. And I noticed that the more I try to fix that part specifically, the less it worked. What I learned is that the is that working on my feelings, learning to accept myself, meditating, being with myself, isolating myself, being present, using meditation as a way to get to know myself, it actually sm smoothly translated to my relationship. It just did. You can't just say I'm a fix my relationships. No, because your relationships is a dynamic of your emotions. It's it's all of an emotion. If your emotional life is is horrible, your relationship with yourself will suck, and your relationship with your other partners will suck. You first got to do the inner work and acknowledge that you have mistakes, that that you have flaws. And if you on the outside world, while you're trying to change, are not honest with people about your mistakes, then you're never really going to change. The underlying uh, message I was trying to give off. You were very open about your dad and his past like infidelity trips. I would imagine that was probably hard for you to bring up, knowing that this was also going to be shown. Your mom would have seen it. It wasn't easy. It's something that we're actually dealing with now um, because you know, even with my dad, it's been tough for him to, for me to even have that conversation with him and really just kind of get to the root of it and kind of let- Families have family shadows. You know how if individuals have shadow selves, families also have shadow selves. And the shadow selves usually are the things that they don't talk about or the things that you may not know, but everyone else knows. You know what I'm saying? Like, and sometimes part of the shadow selves is infidelity. Some shadow selves are- you know, people touching, you know, you know, like keeping it in the family so that it doesn't get out. You get what I'm saying? Everyone has every every family has a shadow self, and that's theirs. Let him understand of, you know, some of the actions that he did when we were younger. You know, plays an effect in how I date now. You know, even Lauren, I didn't even know that. Was I don't give a fuck. Like it's not an excuse. You know, this guy's using self awareness as a as a as a weapon to to excuse his behavior and 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 that and that and and that's narcissistic he may not be narcissistic but what he is doing is narcissistic he's playing the victim a victim shield stuff played a role into my dating and really until i did mm. this show so i get the whole knowledge of like oh he's a red flag he's a red flag i honestly was just trying to you know be the best version of myself and i it, see he should have said and they might be right That's what you should have said. They might be right. I realized that I had problems and I just wanted to articulate that to my partner. It really was no ill will. It really wasn't me trying to yeah, this re feelings. Remember the, me this reminds me of that chick that that she let her boyfriend move in, her ex, and it was because he, uh, what, what was it? Because he was homeless. I'm like, Jesus Christ. 
and 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 she didn't let she wasn't she i asked her to have her have him kicked out she was like no you know he's homeless and long story short she ended up she ended up saying like, she can't see me because she needs to heal but throughout all of that she was making the excuse that the reason why she was acting like that way was because she didn't heal yet it, i i, I it took me it took me a week or two to I'm like you know what go heal go, go heal somewhere else how about that get the fuck out of here don't don't I, I don't I don't want to deal with you you know I don't want to heal deal with you all right <clears throat> and these people that continually bring up their mental health problems whenever they make mistakes is problematic problematic man they're, they 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 make people they make crazy people look bad they trying to let my partner know transparently like hey this is where I'm coming from you also told her that you're nervous you're so he's the type of guy that when he cheats on you he'll bring up his dad cheating <laughs> or that you're nervous you're scared that you're not going to be faithful with oh her. <laughs> people i did not know this i did not i did i swear to god i didn't watch this i Have swear you to cheated god cheated in the past uh, I haven't cheated. I, you know, I've had moments where I, I guess you could say you, a, a situation ship with a girl who really loves you and you cheated. I a situation ship with a girl that you, that loves you and you cheated. So that means you lied. Most likely you, you knew what she wanted. Oh, come on, come on. Man. I haven't cheated on anybody that I actually claimed as my girlfriend. You haven't cheated on anybody that you have actually claimed as your girlfriend. That's a big word, salad people. See, this is this, this guy takes no accountability, man. Most likely, he is the, does that same shit. So I I, I don't want to say I'm a cheater. Um, I think that for me, whenever I date, I'm very honest. If I feel he wasn't even honest this time with her, he could have told her he 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 could have told her that that he doesn't know if he could find marriage. And, and I'll give him props. He was honest about the looks part. He was definitely honest about that. But he was not honest about when he entered the show that that thought that that was the rule. You can't change that rule. Come on, Agent Smith, changing the matrix. I feel as though that I'm not feeling a relationship and cheating could happen. I would typically let the person know that, hey, I don't think we're going on the right path and I would end the relationship. I'm not a proponent of cheating, you know, and that's why marriage is a big thing for me because I don't want to get a divorce. And I understand that infidelity causes divorces. So for me, I just don't want to follow the same patterns that my family went down. So cheating is now nah, most likely people are. I'll say it is even for myself. Um, you know, cheating is a is really an, an inheritable thing, right? Like you could inherit cheating. Infidelity is is and your sexual habits. A lot of the times, is passed down from parent to parent, from parent to child. If your dad was unfaithful, it, there's a high likelihood that you might be unfaithful too. That's just how that works. It, it's just genetics. You know, I, I'm not saying nature nurture, but if you're going to be overcoming something like that, this behavior doesn't bring any hope. It just doesn't. You know? It's a big deal. And I wanted to make sure that there was no if, ands, and buts when going into this marriage. The end goal of this show is to get married because you know you keep saying i'm scared to get married i'm scared for this Did you yeah they, 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 i'm scared it's like you gotta understand when you love someone it fear goes away all fear all calculation all strategies all the things that you read goes away and you're pretty much operating on pure instinct and this guy just doesn't think with his heart when it comes to love he thinks with his head that's not good. Oh, going into the show, okay, maybe I just won't get married? No, I thought that, well, my beginning when I joined the show, my intention was really to build an emotional connection. I didn't think that I, I was capable of really, I was gonna find love on the other side. I didn't think I would, you know, and I did. And I was like, okay, this is amazing. Um, but in terms of the marriage thing, I went into this experiment wanting to be married. You know, like, although I didn't believe I would find marriage, the desire to be married is there like it's still here to this day i want a family why would you go somewhere without thinking that you're gonna get it that that that, that just makes no sense to not, that makes no sense to me people that makes no logical sense to me so okay okay so he he's he's unfaithful 
use her for fame, love bombed her, doesn't really see the problem. That's the biggest part right there. Lack of self-awareness. He says he's self-aware, but I don't think he's self-aware. He has some self-awareness, but not really the type of self-awareness that will fix him. And he lied about what he really want. Another thing about him that I noticed is that... <sighs> I would love to have a wife. I think for me, though, Lauren, was that I wasn't focused on finding a wife. I was more so focused in my regular life of being the best person I could be and also getting my business up and also controlling the things that I could control. I wasn't really putting in the work relationship wise. But again, that's how it works. You work on yourself. You work on your anger. You work on your impatience. You work on your compo compos um, com um, imp compulsivity. You work on your on your honesty. You know, you you work on being happy with little things. That's how you work on your relationship. You don't work on your relationship when you're with them. Like, what the fuck is this? No. You work on yourself by being a better person, by controlling yourself, knowing about yourself, breaking the patterns that you've that you've created and your family have created through self work, through meditation, and then you're with them. You don't work with them once you're there. Come on. Which is why a lot of the fears came out on camera because. Before this, I wasn't dating seriously. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't putting in the yeah, work. She knows I wasn't what that means. Therapy. So he was, was he was like he was slinging that that holy day around. That's what he's pretty much saying. Test that you think you're preparing for, and then you get there and you're like, oh damn, I don't know the answers to this question. And it was a very simple and genuine thing. And I definitely expressed a lot of pessimism towards myself, which I, you know, I need to talk more grace and grace into my relationships, which is something that I'm working on and speaking light into it. But I did think that at, at the end of this, I'll be able to find marriage. So what he's the type of person that says, like, you know, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not saying he does this. So if you're watching this, I, I am not saying you do any of this, but I'm just saying like. Because I've worked with women when I used to be a, a caseworker. I worked with women who were in abusive relationships. And one of the things that, that a lot of abusers do is that they say, yeah, I'm, I hit her, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's, not, it's like a politician that knows the problem, but it knows that if you just keep saying you're working on it, you're going to work on it, you're going to work on it, you could keep people as prisoners of hope. And you can not, and you don't have to change as long as they keep hoping, as long as they keep waiting for that next day, that next moment, that next promise. Keep them there, and and you could have them forever. And that's what he does. He says, "Baby, I'm working on it. I know I cheated on you. Oh, you're your sister, but I'm trying. I'm working on it. Let's let's go to therapy together. Okay, let's go to. I made an appointment. Let's go to therapy together. But the reason why he tells you that is because he knows that could buy him time for the next time. That if you wait long enough, you forget about the mistakes." You, you, you hold on to hope and, and clutch your pearls and hope that he changes. But life shows you that those things rarely happen. People rarely change. And that's just a fact. That's just a fact, people. People rarely change. Me, I think I change. But you know what? If you see the shit that I went through to change, it's not easy, man. It's not easy. For me to change, it, 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 it took a it took Herculean effort. I, I, I was going to 10-day retreats, a bunch of 10-day retreats. A bunch of five day retreats, four days retreats. I remember one year I did like freaking seven retreats. You know, and, and it helped. <laughs> it really did. That's but it's it's intense work. You're by yourself, looking at yourself, seeing your flaws. It hurt. It wasn't like, oh, I'm working on myself. Let me write a, a diary. Hmm. Oh, today I felt this. No, this is like sitting your ass for ten hours, meditate, deal with that pain. Observe that pain. That really changes you from within. That really wires in new neural connect connectivities. Change takes pain. If I had to go through what I went through again, I don't know if I could, to be honest with you. To get to this point, I don't think I don't I don't I don't, I don't want to deal with that pain no more. But what I'm trying to tell you is that I was able to change because I this I I I I was desperate and I and I like I acknowledged my mistakes. I cried about my mistakes. I talked to my friends about my mistakes. They they agree with it. Some way too enthusiastically, right? <laughs> they're, like, they're like, okay, you know what? I gotta tell you one more thing you did wrong. I'm like, calm down there, okay? Easy there. You're getting too excited. But you don't change by just 
oh, I'm working. No, we got to see some battles. We got to see that surgery um, um, scar. It, it's not a comfortable thing. And the first step to changing is recognizing that you need that recognizing your actual flaws. And this guy sugarcoats his flaws, and and he chooses to work on things that are not that are not really flaws. This guy, this guy's ego won't let him see it. To be honest with you, hopefully he does. Hopefully he does. Um, but it just won't. You know. Um, so yeah, that's my walking red flag video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want me to break down more of these types of videos, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make more of it. If you guys want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, click in the description down below where it says work with me one-on-one -on -one, and I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, you know, to get dating advice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys ever want to learn how to use your feminine energy to influence people, learn how to use your masculine energy to become more assertive, and also learn how to blend both energies to improve your dating life, your spiritual life, honestly, um, your relationship life, your family life, your career life, this is the course for you. If I had to make a course for my nieces, I have two nieces, one is 8, 19, and one is 14, 15, 16, holy shit. Oh my God, he's a bad fucking uncle, he's a, he's a bad uncle, get him. Shut up, Melissa, you should, you should get this course, right? And this is the course that I will make for them. So, for example, watch the curriculum, right? In the first week, we're going to be showing you how to establish a strong masculine foundation without letting it hurt your feminine energy. This masculine foundation is a source of who you are, right? It's it's your bodyguard. Without this, your whatever feminine energy you create will be destroyed by the outside because your, your, fem, your masculine is your shield. So we'll talk about goal setting. We'll talk about how to develop a serious attitude. We're going to be talking about how to um, how to use more logic, how to use more goal oriented behavior. It's more how to be a man, <laughs> you know, it, you know, now the next one is how to embrace the feminine energy, right? This one would this one will teach you about how to minimize excessive masculine traits, developing self-awareness, healing abundant feminine energy, regulating your emotion, vo uh, mastering voice qualities and, ex and facial expressions, surrendering control and allowing pain to be felt. This is honestly, it's, it's, it, it, this will supercharge, like, like, like Kayo Ken, your masculine energy. After that, we have um, femininity in the workplace and how to be feminine in the workplace without letting people take advantage of you and the nuances of um, how women on power should behave versus women who are subordinates in the workplace and even the dress code. They, they, these are, this is based on psychology, people. It's kind of insane. I'm actually excited about this one. The next week, we talk about navigating the labyrinth of male and female friendship. And this, a lot of women find confusing, so we talk about that. And how to identify envious friends, how to identify the good friends, how to keep male friends, and how to keep female friends. Week five, we talk about how to release the burden of the past and stop and destroy mental projections. This is actually really powerful. Um, and this, and then week six, we talk about how to increase your observational power so that you so that you could read people better. Um, and we have a bunch of bonuses. It, the course starts at um, nine at ninety nine dollars, um, and you guys can pre order the course today at sixty nine dollars before it goes out. Um, if you're watching this, most likely I'm in the meditation retreat, so I really most likely I will be praying for all of you guys. And um, just click on the description down below of the video right there. You'll see it, and you could pre order that course. It's gonna be out by by the end of next month or the beginning of February of, of March. One of the two people, because I have a 10-day retreat to do. And I want to I want to finish the course um, after the retreat, because I think the, the ideas are going to be so much better. All right, man, I'll see you guys later. Free order, man. Oh, I'm closing the channel.